In this video, we're going to go through and I'll show you some of the new features in vSphere 5.5's networking. There's nothing too earth shattering here. Uh, we had some really cool stuff in 5.1, rollback recovery, export, things like that. Uh, the initial release of LACP. These are more, you know, kind of minor additions, though I do kind of like the ACL, um, you know, being able to do access lists and things like that. But let's take a look. So here again is the 5.5 web interface. And again, all the cool new stuff is a web interface. You can't use the thick client. So we will go to networking. And here's my lab. I've got the Nash Lab distributed switch already enabled and configured and already being used. And most of your stuff is going to be in here. So we'll go to manage and we'll do this in no particular order. Uh, first thing is uh, LACP. So the initial release of this was in 5.5 and it'll allow you to do LACP, um, Link Aggregation Control Protocol. And the idea here is you can do port channels and uh, do communication of port channels, members, things like that, between your vSphere hosts and your up-level physical switches. Problem was in 5.1, you could only do what we call one lag or link aggregation group. So if you have you know, four NICs bundled together in one port channel, that's a lag. And as you know, if you've used the distributed switch, you have a single uplink, this guy right here, for each of your distributed switches. So basically you had to put them all in a lag. Um, I guess you could do, you know, I guess you didn't have to put them all. You could put some in a lag and some not and, and pick and choose. But it kind of defeated the purpose. So we can now do multiple lags. Uh, you do this by hitting plus and you can create your lag. So the first one's called lag one. You can name it whatever you want to name it, you know, lag demo, number of ports, you know, switch or uh, NICs you want to put in it, the mode. So when you set up LACP, you have active or passive, you can choose. We now have a whole bunch of load balancing algorithms. Only thing here is pick the one that makes the most sense to you. Um, that's a pretty good one source, destination IP, TCP, UDP port, and VLAN. Reason being is that's a lot of different things to hash on. So hopefully we can distribute traffic across multiple uplinks easier than a basic hashing algorithm. But the thing to keep in mind is, make sure whatever you set here is what you set on your physical switch. If they don't match, weird things do occur. Usually it breaks things, so keep that in mind. You can set some port policies. Normally you don't have to deal with these. They uh, come down from the uplink port group, but you can override things like your VLAN trunking. If you're only going to trunk certain VLANs over this lag that are different than others, normally you leave this default. So we hit OK. And just to prove a point, as soon as it's done, I'll make another one. We'll just call it, uh, you know, lag second. I don't know. Bump, bump, and we'll leave it default and hit OK. So now you have your lag groups. There's a little bit of information here on how you migrate networking traffic to the lag. So newly created lags are unused by default in the teaming and failover order of a distributed port group. And this is the important thing, because only one lag must be the active uplink backing the traffic for a distributed port group. So I'll show you this in a second, but let's say you got six NICs. Four of them are in a lag, two of them are not, whatever reason. Um, you can't make all six of those active for a port group. The lag has to be the active thing, nothing else. So um, only one lag must be the active backing for the traffic. And so it basically has some suggestions for how to migrate over to a lag if you have like, you know, individual NICs. So it's going to tell you to set the lag as a standby uplink on a port group. Reassign your physical network adapters to the lag ports. I'll show you how to do that. And then you'll move the lag up to the active. So basically if you have four independent NICs set as active right now, you would move this lag, lag up as the standby. Then we'll go into the host and it's kind of like assigning physical NICs to your uplink groups with the uh, VDS. You'll, um, instead of assigning them to like uplink 1, uplink 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever, you'll assign them to a lag. And I'll show you that. But you could, once you start, you know, you go in, you assign all four of those into a lag. We would then move that up to the active for the port group. So let me hopefully demystify that a little bit. Uh, let's take a look at this guy. Right click, edit settings. So if we look at teaming and failover, if we look at team and click it, you'll see lag second and lag demo now show as uplinks, and these are the default uplinks. So right now I've only got one one gig NIC as my active uplink for my VM network and my little lab here, um, but we could move this down into a lag. So what they would tell you to do is take this, move it up, see, it's going to warn you, isn't that neat? 
Uh, let's see. Mixing lags and standalone uplinks is not supported. Uh, don't do that. So what you could do is we would move it to here. Let's see what it says. Using a combination of active standalone uplinks and a standby lag is only supported as an intermediate configuration. That's what I'm talking about. So we would say OK. Da, 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 yeah. Yep, proceed. So it's going to do that. Now what we would normally do is, uh, let's see, my hosts are already deployed. So I've already got my NICs moved over. I have one free NIC on Bumblebee here, and that's the one we'll play with. Let's go to networking, virtual switches, ba, 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 and we'll go edit my physical adapters. So here's your uplinks. Now I could assign a spare NIC to the, to the uplink. But you can also assign it, you notice, for the lag. So we told it each lag could have four NICs, so there they are. You click it, you hit plus, and you would pick the NIC that you want to be for the lag. So if you're going to migrate uh, physical NICs off of your existing uplinks to a lag, uh, usually the way you do it is if you have, you know, you should have two, at least two NICs in every uplink for redundancy anyway. You could walk them over, add one, then add another. Or if you've done it like we just did where the lag is the standby, you can move them all into the lag at one time. Hope and pray that your physical switch configuration matches um, and make sure everything works. So obviously you want to put a host in maintenance mode and test this first. Or you could walk it over and test it and see how it works. But you will move that over. Let's assume I'd move that over. And then we would just come back. It's easier way to do this. Use our recently used item, which is a nice feature here. And so then what you could do is, once you moved everything to the lag, come back teaming and failover, you would move this guy up to active and move that guy down to, stand, uh, to unused. And that's how you walk traffic over to a lag. I don't see a lot of people using LACP like this yet. It's fairly new. It's, a, it's actually very misunderstood by most VMware administrators. Uh, it's kind of complicated. So, but the idea is you can bundle these NICs together and it basically takes the place of those independent uplinks that we normally use. So let's see what else is good. Uh, let's go back into here, edit, boom, boom, boom. And if we look at traffic filtering and marking, this is another new feature. So we can enable it. And then you can hit plus and you start creating your rules. So you give it a name, whatever you want to call it. There we go, just this demo rule. And you can do things like tag it. So you can tag it with a class of service, a DSCP value, whatever you want to do, or both. And you can set that. You can allow it. You can drop it. Just let you figure out what you want to do there. Ingress or egress. And then you set up a rule. So it could be a system traffic qualifier, which is basically your, you know, what is it, seven traffic types? So one, two, three, four, eight traffic. Oh, that's right. We have virtual SAN now. We have vSAN. Eight traffic types. And you say, hey, anything vMotion, I'm going to drop. Probably not a great idea, but you could tag it so your up level switches give it some sort of priority. Uh, you can do, let's see, Mac, which is fairly simple. You can set that. Is this, is that. You can set VLAN ID, Mac address. Uh, destination and source and you can do the same thing with IP so you can do you know you can block this traffic it is what I would call a stateless ACL it's not like a state full firewall it's going to inspect every frame independently it's not going to track connections anything like that so keep that in mind but just like anything else you can set protocol source port destination IP source and IP destination match does not match is not whatever and select that, you know, matches something, prefix length, whatever. And if it hits, it'll do that. So you can hit it and tag, hit and block, allow it, whatever you want to do. But the big gotcha is, again, it is stateless. So it's beneficial, but, you know, not. it's not like a, a firewall. It's not VCNS app. It's not something like that. And one more thing, you can do it at the port group level or VNIC level. Do it at a VNIC level. Traffic filtering and marking, you need to allow override say OK, and I need to go find a related object in this port group. We're going to call that a VM. Wait for it, and we'll pick this guy. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Ba -ba -ba. I'm doing this totally wrong. I want to go to the distributed switch. 
that gave me the settings for the VM. Port. Scroll down till I find what I'm looking for. Uh, let's see, sort by that. Where are you at? Where are you at? Well, let's see if they'll just let me do one. Edit. You can say override enable and then do the same thing here so you could do it on a vnic level you know my untangle vm for example uh, you could do it at a port group level either way it lets you do marking and traffic filtering so that's another new pretty cool feature uh, keep that in mind so let's see what else can i show you uh let's take a look here this i'm ssh'd into a host uh, i'm on bumblebee again and one thing that you can do is to da, 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 packet capture. So I mentioned this, this is kind of host-based packet capture. If you do this, do H, do it into more, which is what I just had. Expand that out. Basically it allows you to capture traffic or packets. It's using TCP dump uh, and you can output that. So there's a bunch of different stuff here. Um, I've been using the beta version of 5.5. It's not, this isn't documented in anything yet. I've just been playing around with it. So you can do some interesting stuff. Let's see, I got a few things in history here. So like this one, I can say packet capture, uplink, and give it a physical nick if I want to. Uh, just keep in mind if you're using, you know, teaming, hashing, stuff like that, that it's going to you only look at that one. If you get hashed across another one, you're out of luck. But I can say, look, um, look for anything here with the source IP of 91, and it's going to sit there and wait. So let's see here. I will ping this from another window, and you'll start to see packets show up. You can, da -da, let's see, oops. You can output dash O, it'll dump it to a PCAP file. So you can pull that back into TCP dump or anything that understands PCAP files. And once again, if we look at help, put that into more. Uh, let's see, you can do things like here's your options, switch port. You can look at a specific switch port using the port ID. I'll show you that in a second, logical interface, uh, VMK. Uh, uplink, which is what we did for the physical. Down here, you can do things like MAC address, destination, source, source IP, VLAN, IP, all that stuff. So there's a lot of different options there. If you do want to do, like you want to capture it based on the switch port ID, you get that from ESX top, hit in, and there's your switch port ID that you need to plug in. So that's pretty good. Um, you know, if you're really trying to, to figure out where a problem is, if you're seeing something, that'll be very useful. But all in all, I mean, there's some neat stuff in the networking side, 40 gig NIC support, and what's called enhanced SRIOV, uh, which is basically just more efficient. I don't have a lot of customers, I can't think of really any customer off the top of my head that we have using SRIOV. Uh, we have a lot of people using uh, Cisco UCS and its VNIC and VHBA capability. Uh, and using what they uh, what they can do as far as uh, direct path VM direct path, but nobody doing standard space SRIOV that I'm aware of. But it, it's probably going to become more popular. But that's it for the demo. Uh, some good stuff here, you know, especially when you look at some of the capabilities. As we add more bandwidth, things like L multi LACP lags will become more important. 40 gig, you know, not yet, but maybe especially with vSAN, we need better interconnect performance for things like vSAN. So that's it for the demo. Look forward to seeing you on the next one.